demonstration of IBM InfoSphere Data Architect. InfoSphere Data Architect is a collaborative data design solution to discover, model, relate, and standardize diverse and distributed data assets. In this demo, we'll use InfoSphere Data Architect to do the following. Import and forward engineer changes from a logical model to the database. Publish a web-based report of the physical model for auditing and team review. And finally, reverse engineer a model from an existing database, update the model, then compare and sync the physical model with the original source database. Let's start by exploring the forward engineering process. We'll import an existing logical data model from another system, make some changes to the model to reflect new requirements, and transform the logical model to a physical data model. From that physical model, we'll generate and save the database-specific DDL deployment script and generate a web report that our DBA and other team members can review. After the DDL is signed off and approved, the DBA can deploy the changed schema to the target database. When we first start InfoSphere Data Architect, we see what is called a perspective. InfoSphere Data Architect is built upon open source Eclipse technology, which provides a basic workbench into which other tools, such as Data Architect, are plugged in for extended integration. Perspectives provide a grouping of views that are associated with the particular tools that are installed in this Eclipse instance. In this case, to work with Data Architect, we need to switch to the data perspective. We can customize this data perspective by resizing, adding, or removing the views. Let's close some tab views that we don't need for the demo. Don't worry, it's easy to get them back by selecting Window from the top menu bar and selecting whichever views you want back. Or Reset Perspective if you want the default data perspective back. The Data Project Explorer on the left is where all the data development and modeling objects reside in associated projects. For data modeling, we must first create a data design project to store our data model objects. To do this, we right-click in the Data Project Explorer and choose New Project. Using the right-click action in Eclipse is frequently used to see what actions are available for use. The wizard guides us through the process of creating a new data design project. From this point, we could create a new logical data model. However, since we have one already that we want to modify, We'll use a wizard to import what was previously created using another modeling tool by right-clicking in the Data Project Explorer and choosing Import. We can import various model formats created by different modeling tools, such as CA AllFusion Irwin, Cognos, IBM Rational Rose, Sybase, Microsoft Excel, and others. Let's import a CA Irwin data model. First, we choose the input model and the target project folder to store the imported model. Data Architect supports importing both logical and physical models, or, as we do here, can detect automatically what type of model we have. We choose the import options we want, and the model is created. By expanding the new data design project, we see the appropriate folders for storing model metadata and diagrams. Now let's take a look at information about the GoSales CT logical model that we imported by double-clicking on it. In the Data Model Editor, we can first add some relevant documentation about the model. Remember, a model is simply metadata. To visualize and work with a model, we need to work with the visual representation of the model, which is a diagram. Notice that diagrams are often too large to be seen in the Diagram Editor in their entirety. The outline view here gives us a visual map of where we are in the context of the complete diagram. By clicking on the outline, we can move directly to that location in the diagram. The first thing we want to do with this model is add a new customer state tax entity, which we can do by simply dragging and dropping a new entity to the diagram, giving it a name, and adding the appropriate attributes, including the primary key, which is the customer state. To add more details about this key, we use the context-sensitive properties view below. The second attribute is a customer tax rate, which is defined as a decimal. Note that with Data Architect, it is possible to use domain models to constrain the values and patterns of business-level data types. So for example, we could have defined a domain model for tax rate to ensure that no values outside an appropriate range are entered, maybe between 0 and 10. 
A domain model could also be used to specify when data is private and requires masking, such as social security numbers or credit card data. To enforce naming standards, you could also use a glossary model. Moving on, to create a foreign key relationship from the parent table, customer state tax, to the child table, customer, we simply point, click, and drag and enter the name taxes for this relationship. The next thing we want to do is delete an attribute we don't need anymore, customer info, from the customer entity. Note that the only delete option is to delete from model, which means the attribute will be deleted from both the diagram and the data model. For entities, there is an additional option to delete from diagram, which means it is only removed from the diagram but not the data model. This can be handy when different people want to focus and work on different parts of the model. Finally, because working with a diagram can make it difficult to read at times, let's right-click in the model view and select Arrange All to arrange the model and then save it. Then we can double-click on the Diagram tab to maximize the diagram view to see our new model and then double-click again to return it to its normal size. Now we're going to create a physical data model from the logical model we just created. We use the physical model to deploy the schema to a target database platform. With Data Architect, we can create multiple physical models from a single logical model. Data Architect supports many database platforms, including all of the DB2 platforms, Informix, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and others. Here we create a physical data model for DB2 for ZOS. We can see the GoSalCT database model is now visible in the Data Project Explorer. All the entities and attributes are now tables and columns in the schema. By default, underscore is used as a separator in names. You can change this default using the Data Architect window preference for data management naming standards. Next, let's generate DDL for the new schema. Because our ZOS system is under strict control, we won't deploy automatically on that server, although we certainly have that option. Instead, we'll generate and save a DDL script into the Data Model Project SQL Scripts folder so that it can be checked in a library for version control, shared with others on the team, reviewed and approved before execution by the DBA. This concludes the forward engineering process in which we imported a logical model, changed the logical model to reflect new business requirements, created a physical data model for a target database, and then generated and saved the DDL deployment script. Next, we'll show how to create a web report of the physical model schema that can be a useful accompaniment with the DDL script for review. Data Architect provides a variety of reporting capabilities, including the ability to create customized reports using BERT, an Eclipse-based business intelligence and reporting tool. For the purpose of providing audit documentation for team review, we can create a web-based report. To do this, we select the schema and then choose Data and then Publish.